series of talk like you've never heard it before. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hey everybody, it's Alex Bennett. It is the Ramble, and uh, my wife is driving me crazy tonight. Uh, uh, what, what, what? Wait a minute. Hold on a second. got to turn your mic on. I'm what? watching Damien. Can you hear yourself in your earphones? Uh, yeah. Oh, well then what were you complaining about for crying out loud? I don't know what you're talking about. You you were saying I can't hear, I can't hear. What are you what are you doing? I'm watching. You're watching what? Damien. But we're doing a program I here. I know, but this is important. I'm timing him. Well, uh, uh, what? <laughs> I'm timing him. He does he's very fast. Not tonight. That little arrow is just sitting there. It's not moving tonight, uh, Damien. Uh, Sorry. Uh, uh, well, okay. Well, anyway. Uh, th- that's my wife who could be care less about doing this program tonight. So. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, but I mean, I'm, I'm trying. Here. I'm trying to do the. I'm trying to do the switch over. Oh, here we go. And I'm trying to do the switch over, and all of a sudden, I can't hear this, and I can't hear that, and I, I almost missed starting the uh, recording. Ooh. Yeah. Oh. Well, yes. Oh my gosh. Well, oh my gosh is right. I have a lot of things I have to do all at once, and the older I get, the harder it is well, to do. Well, that's true. That's true. First I do A, and then I do B, and then I do C, and, you know, whatever. Damien, what happened when, to you? When you stop it with Damien, nobody knows what's going on. I'm watching. Well, it doesn't matter. Here nobody knows what's going on. He's so cute. What? Oh, well. Oh, boy. Wait, if, are you finished? I'm Let's finished. Just, Huh? There goes Damien. No, he's not gone yet. He's he hasn't almost si- gone. He hasn't signed off he's the... He's going uh, thing. up there now. Is he? Yep. Yeah, well, yeah, there he goes. Okay. okay. He's gone. He's posted his show. Yes, he Are did. Are you happy? Yes. Boy, You'd be oh, nice. Boy. What? You'd be nice. Well, you may, You almost made me miss my cue. Well, I'm going I to may, be in fact, for a whole week. And <laughs> it may have screwed the opening to the show for the reruns. I doubt it. On the TV. Yeah. I doubt it. it. May be, I don't doubt it. Here's my little violin. What? You, you don't care. I work my ass off here every I'm night, play- and I don't know why. I'm playing the violin. I'm beginning to say to myself, gee, shouldn't I just do this one day a week? <laughs> like, that's what Albert suggested. Oh, he said, I don't know why you do this five, four nights a week, you know. Well, you, and, might, you uh, might want to try it and huh? see what happens. Talk, t- it, it, you it, might want to try it and see what happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You might want to try it and see what happens. Yeah, well, yeah. Listen, I miss all the good stuff that you talk about because you like to save it for the call but there's lots of stuff to talk about. Yeah. That Obama speech today was just incredible. Oh, by the way, Phil is not calling tonight. Oh, it's a Phil-free night. Yeah, Phil not, free to of, call. Of all nights for him not to call, I would just, you know, <laughs> I'd love to hear him find any fault with, with that, that speech. with that Obama speech, you know? Uh, and then and then and then they do play it right on top of Trump's speech. Where he says, "Oh, I fell asleep." <laughs> you know what? Well, to begin with, Trump, <laughs> Obama is a much better speaker than you oh, could ever course. hope to Absolutely. be. Absolutely. And uh, I wasn't falling asleep. I watched it twice. I watched the whole it's thing. It was a masterful speech. It's excellent. In which uh, he really was trying to. I don't know. It's just I miss him. God, I miss him. I miss that kind of elegance. But I don't have to miss him anymore. He's back. He's he's talking to the, the young generation because that's the generation that's as he said was the biggest population of voting age. Is this Gen X? Oh, really? Yeah, it's the biggest group of numbers yeah. of, of voting. But but it was a great it was a great speech. Yeah. It was really and, and of course the Republicans can use it also as a get out to vote speech. Well, you know something? Uh, the reason I wanted to have Phil here tonight was because I wanted him wanted to say, go listen to that speech and tell me anything in it that you disagree with. As right wing as he is, as conservative as he considers himself to be, as defensive of Trump as he is. Try and find anything in that speech that was that he said that you don't can't agree with. I agree. 
basically it was, it was a call for us to get back to our core values yeah and know? and to and to help save democracy which is so frail right now well yeah, yeah well it yeah, is yeah yeah it is it is very we're frail. at a turning point right now uh i thought one of his better lines was uh when in what world or whatever are nazis okay yeah is it okay to to <laughs> salute the nazis yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's not okay uh, you know uh and uh you know it was it was just a masterful speech and it was well written i don't know who wrote it for him it he may matter. have written it himself yeah. after all he doesn't have much to do he's going into a, a, entertainment <laughs> But he, uh, he delivers a wonderful speech. He always has, I mean, he could yeah. win an election with that speech today. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, it, where he has a little trouble, hems and haws, is when he goes off script. When somebody's interviewing him, and then he has to get back, get, 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 get an answer back. He got, uh, it, it's a lot of humming and hawing. But when he gets up there to give a speech, there is nobody better. He's better than Clinton was. And his jokes are good. He's got some good jokes. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, he's very, very light. And, and so I can't see where anybody would find disagreement with that speech today. Yeah. It wasn't biased. It wasn't saying, oh, hey, we're liberals and we do this and that. No, it says we have to talk as a country, both... Rem Democrats and Republicans. You know what he did? He together. best he best described the good things about being a liberal. Okay, about being to the left, uh, and just the core values that we have as a result of it. Um, much like the guy who wrote the op-ed article in the in the well, Times. Well, he also talked about how um, the Republican yeah, you Party already, is... Don't, you're not letting me finish oh, my I'm thought. sorry, sorry. Much like the guy who wrote the op-ed piece, who, who, if, we're, if, if we want to be kind to him, would say this was somebody who felt so compelled to tell the country, you know, what's going on and to warn them. Uh, today, Obama got up and did pretty much the same thing in that I think he came forward because he just felt it was time he had to say something about yeah. this. You and, and what I liked is the fact that he was really talking to the younger generation. I mean, he was speaking to a college crowd, and they're the ones that are voting. You know, they're the ones that have to get well, out. Well, you know, the thing is, uh, when I heard that, that speech today, uh, I was so enthralled by it, uh, I didn't change the channel. And I really should have gone over to see if Fox was running it. Mm. Uh, because I'm sure they were covering the... Uh, tr a Trump rally, um, which was going on at the same of time. Of course. You know, but... Uh, and all he does in his speeches is talk about, you know, all the things that he has done. You know. Well, I mean, basically Obama said, hey, you know, you just simply continued what I started. It's really true. Uh, we were, on, we were in a, in a, in a, moving in a, in a fairly positive direction. I mean, look at the country when he took over. Oh, it was a mess. It was a mess. It was just an absolute mess. Well, the Republicans always leave it a mess. Right, and then, and they, then they want to come down about this big extra. <laughs> well, here's what happens. It's kind of like, you know, when I was, uh, you ever have a dog and you throw a stick and he goes and chases the stick, but you don't have to actually throw the stick. Just you can like just that. pretend to throw a stick and, and he goes chasing it, right? It's the same thing with the Democrats. Every four years or every eight years, they want to win. And for the last eight years, the Republicans have fucked up the country. And so what, they, what the Democrats have always managed to uh, 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 adopt uh, was a broken country. And then they have to fix it. Like Obama had, we had the, the mortgage crisis. We had... That was the closest thing to, to a depression to, to a depression we've ever had, and he had to get us out of that. Well, it's like there we go chasing the stick again. No, let them do it for another eight years. Let them really take it into the <laughs> dumper and never get elected again. But no, we come along and then we're blamed for all the things that went wrong while you were in office trying to save this fragile democracy. Well, plus the fact when he came in, when Obama came in, the Republicans pretty much didn't allow him to do anything. Well, no, he, the first two years, he had a, a Democratic 
uh, uh, yeah, Congress. he still had trouble getting that health plan in. No, that happened during the second the second term. First term. No, second term. First. Obamacare was second term. He didn't tackle it in the first term because he realized something. He learned from Hillary Clinton. You learn from Clinton. You don't do it during your first part oh, of you, you don't do it during the first part of your time in office. Okay. Because uh, then you can't get all the other stuff done because people are saying what a failure that was, or you know, you have a harder time getting it through. And now that they have this incredible tax bill that you know helped the one percent, um, where are they going to make up that deficit? They're looking at Social Security. They're looking at Medicare, Medicaid, of uh, food for kids and schools. I mean, you know who I feel sorry for. Uh, get, uh, I had a discussion with my physical therapist yesterday about Medicare, Medicaid, insurance companies, what have you. And doctors really have it rough now. They re no, you, and you, you, what was that look? They do have it rough. They don't have it rough. Uh, have you ever talked to some of them? I have. Well, I have too. I mean, it's just paperwork. If we had single payer, how many doctors do you know in in the time that you in the last couple of years do you know who've just gotten out of the business? That's true. Or gone to work for an M a, 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 what it was it a hospital a, a, a hospital or whatever. Uh, I know way too many. One of our doctors, a woman who worked with uh, Doctor Kenish. Uh, who was his partner, she left and went to Mount Sinai, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, 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 the first doctor I ever knew that disappeared from the, from, the, from the scene, I had a great doctor in San Francisco because as you know, I'm a hypochondriac. Oh, really? And I had a, <laughs> I had a doctor who said to me, he was, a, uh, he was my uh, look at your ass doctor, uh, the, uh, my, uh, the, the you know. Uh, no, uh, gastroenterologist. Okay. And he said, uh, you have a great fear about, oh no, he was prostate. Yeah, he was a urologist. The finger up your ass yeah. doctor. And he, uh, he was good, he was really good, but he said, you know, you really need a primary care physician. And he said, I know how you are about doctors because I've noticed that you're apprehensive. I've got just the doctor for you. He deals with hypochondriac. <laughs> so I found this doctor, and uh, I do remember that uh, when you went into his office, when you went into his waiting his room, you know the little room they have you wait in for the doctor in waiting room. They give you sh little slippers to put on, and they had like funny little faces on them. And you looked at the ceiling, and there were pictures on the ceiling. <laughs> he was just wacky that way, just to calm you down. But when I ever went to that doctor, and I had something wrong with me, and I walked out of there. I knew I'd been taken care of. You know, I didn't have, I wasn't apprehensive about the outcome. And, uh, but he, all of a sudden one day said, I'm giving up my practice. This was years ago, and I'm moving to Sedona, Arizona, where I'm gonna go to work for, you know, one of these hospitals. Because I can't afford it any longer. Single doctors having that single office, the doctors you're used to going to, you know, the doctor with the office, and you go and he's got the painting, the writing on the, on the window, and uh, you go in, and there he is, old Doc, smoking his cigarette, <laughs> you know. You go in there, and he's, uh, you know, he's doing what he does. Um, and today, you don't have those kind of doctors anymore. I asked yesterday, I asked this guy, uh, my physical therapist, how many people do you have working here? who deal with nothing but the insurance companies. Oh, every doctor has one Do you know how many people, people this place employs? He said eight. He said, we got three out front and five in the back and they get a total of about $400,000 a year just to get the money from the insurance companies yeah. and from Medicare. Yeah. You know, so you can't be that single doctor who's got his little office, you know, and people trust him and let's go see doc, you know? I remember when I was growing up, the doctors came to the house. Oh, well that, forget that. The last doctor I ever had come to my house, and she may still be doing it, was an orthopedist. And the reason why she came to your house was she said, I decided that having an office was too expensive and that most of my patients, because their feet were bad, are old people. And they don't wanna have to travel to an office. So I just make house calls. That's how I do my business, I carry my 
business in my valise here. And, uh, you know, she dealt with my feet, mm -hmm. you know, came out and, and did that. But, no, you don't have doctors making house calls, although they have a new thing. Oh, the, um, the concierge. The concierge. Our doctor. All of them. Came up with this concierge thing. And All for, the doctors. For $2,000 like. a year. You get a house visit. You get, you get, no, you get concierge service. In other words, if you call him up and say, I'm sick, he'll see you right now. If it's three in the morning, he'll now, see you. Now, uh, I, I, somehow, I don't know, it, it just seems really weird to me that in my lifetime, uh, doctors have been there when you're sick. You know, you call him up, you say, I'm sick. He says, get down here right now, right? But now he goes, I'm, I'm sorry, do you hear my concierge service? <laughs> you know, <laughs> but, but and, and with the concierge service, what you get is a... Uh, is his home phone number <laughs> and which I'm sure isn't his home phone number it's probably his business number and uh, uh, you know he'll be a, a call, on call 24 hours a day for you with his concierge service right right so uh, and but I who you know he's my doctor I what am I gonna pay two thousand dollars for just so I can you know but all the doctors are doing that we got grandfathered in but a friend of mine, her and her husband, had no choice. They went to the doctor because they didn't have a choice to be grandfathered in. They had to pay it. Did you see the thing I sent you today from... Uh, yeah, what is that? I don't know. I thought you might call the, the well, when you get a chance. When I get a chance. I don't think it applies to us. It's basically... It's an increase here it, and there. It's an, but it's an increase in what makes you eligible to get the, the yeah. health insurance. Yeah, We've we're got fine. it already. We're fine. Oh, if they charge a little more, listen... It, it, it's it, a steal. It, it's a good service. Yeah. It's a good service. So anyway, so uh, her computer, which I felt, I'm so proud of myself. I fixed you her computer. Be. You should be very proud I fixed proud her of computer until she went in this morning and it was broken again. Well, it was black. It was just dead. <laughs> it, it, the hard drive. And then I started up and the line went and it went and it went and it went and it went and never started up. So then I, I just recently, I just went back and reformatted the drive and re-put in the system. And then I re-put in the backup of the stuff. Took about eight hours for it to, oh to cook. Okay, but uh, now I turned it all off. It's just fragile. Don't, if you need it, turn it on. But, you know, there's something wrong with that hard drive. Well, it's old. And you're going to have to get yourself a Mac it's Mini. It's 10 years and old. And I just bought you a big... Screen, 32 like inch this. screen will that will this screen fit over there yeah it will yeah. do you think yeah i could even put it on a slant well you don't need to put it on a slant you just move everything over yeah it'll be yeah. fine yeah so i got you a big 32 because it doesn't uh it, the real estate is different all your things will be larger like your browser and so on. you mean the icons no the browser itself will be larger on the screen well, you can change that. No, you can't. The display? You can't no. change it with display? No. You change the, you can make your icons bigger and smaller. Well, you can do that, the icons, but you can't do the browser. The browser just is a browser, you know? You can't, uh, you can't take this browser, and if I make it smaller, what happens is you lose, uh, look here, see? See, watch what happens. Oh, see? I know that. I do that every yeah. day in my office. Yeah, so. Uh, uh, it, it, it's just you know it's just a matter of getting used to it it's just not going to look as the way that one looks okay but so it's going to have my background on there I'll be but fine. what we're doing is that uh, we're going to get a Mac Mini but big but uh, next Tuesday they're coming out with all the new stuff for Apple I'll be and we're hoping coming. that they're, they're going to have a new Mac Mini. If they don't, we'll just buy the ones that already exist. But if they do have the new Mac Mini, we may have to wait till they come out. Well, I we'll see. We'll out. see what, you know. Yeah, but uh, that, uh, you know, I, I think uh, the Mac Mini is the way to go. Do not get an iMac. That's, you know, because when the hard drive goes, unless, you know. We already discussed this. This machine is, what, 2008, I think? What machine? This? That one, yeah. It's old. 2008. It's older than that. I think if I turned it on, I could find out exactly what year it was. But 2007, 2008. So, you know, I sure, we could take it out to a place. Apple won't do it because they won't work on one that old. But if I, t I have places you could go, and they would tear that apart and put a new hard drive in there. It costs us a couple of hundred bucks, but you go, hey, wait a minute. This is an old computer, you know. 
how much am I willing to invest in an old computer when I can get the newest state-of-the-art stuff? Plus that one, you won't be able to upgrade to the new operating system where the Mini Mac you will, or the Mac Mini or whatever, you will be able to. Hear me, listen to me, I'm all stuffed up. I am up. all stuffed up too. You know what it is? The weather. It's, it's no, I think it's Allergies? pollen. Let me have some of that. Uh, this is a, this is generic Flonase. It's good. And I, I didn't use it a lot, and then it turned out I have like 20 bottles of the stuff sitting around. No, but it helped me through the, the spring. Really? Yeah. It, it, it's, pretty, it's pretty good. It, I, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. I have all my medicines. All right, it's here. time for me to come over. No, it's not yes, time. Yes, it is. No, you yes. have four minutes. Four minutes. Well, I'm going to start. No, don't. <laughs> Do we have to? I don't want to go through this routine again, okay? We have to start. Huh? We have to start. Listen, I'm going away on Sunday. Yeah, she is going away. To our annual meeting in Hong Kong. So all the all the women who know me. Uh, Just change the sheets. Yeah, get ready to come over. <laughs> no, you're going, you're going to China, and you're going there only for four, three days? Two days to get there, two days to be there, and two days to come back. Wait a minute. You go Sunday. I get there Monday. You get there Monday. I'm there Tuesday and Wednesday. Yeah, that's when the thing is. I leave Thursday, but it's actually two days, but I come back Thursday. I leave Thursday and come back Thursday. You come back Thursday. Yeah. yeah. I'm actually like in, I go back in You time. know what's funny with all of that? You really don't get, you, don't see, you, you probably don't have enough time to get jet lag. Oh, are you kidding? It's a killer. I'm jet lagged the whole time I'm there. Plus, now, why when don't I you come go back, over there and stay there for a couple of days? They'd let you do that. I was going to, but you know, there's just so much happening in our office right now. So, and you're not coming, so. Yeah. I was going to go visit um, um, Echo and her husband, but they're coming here in October. Yeah, so where are they? Are they in they're, in, they're in Shanghai. They're in Shanghai. But they're coming here in October. And you're going to be in Shanghai. No, no you're going to be in Hong, Hong Kong. Kong. Hong Kong. Oh, well. Yeah. You like Hong Kong? Yeah, it's nice. This, it's humid, isn't it? Oh, my God, it's humid. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody keeps a little glass of water on their desk. Really? For the bugs. <laughs> For the bugs? Yes. I'll go into the water. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, the, the, you, it, is it, the humidity is supposedly terrible. There. It's like going to the equator. We're pretty close to it. But everything's air-conditioned wherever you go. Everything. And everything is underneath. I mean, you, you're in a hotel, and you take an escalator five stories down. There's this mall, five stories of mall oh. underneath in rock. Somewhere. <laughs> and then you can go over to another hotel, you taking can, that? Yeah, going you can walk from hotel to hotel. And, and it's all air-conditioned. Everything's air-conditioned. Even the walkways are air-conditioned. Wow. Yeah. Does anybody walk outside? Yeah, I walk outside. Yeah, but it's humid. Well, it's not always. Well, well, I mean, uh, uh, Echo, what's the temperature? And, oh, she's in the other room. Okay, uh, come on. What? It's time. What? What, it's are you, time. what are you doing? What are you doing? Watch it. Look, look at this. Now, she's... I'm coming over, so you better let me come over. Oh, okay. Well, hold on a second. Yeah, there, there we go. There we go. Come on uh, over. Okay. Come on okay. over. Oh, let me get rid of this. You're going to miss me? Huh? No, I'm not going to miss you. Okay. How can I miss you if, if you're only gone for four days? Well, you know, I would really miss you a lot if you went more, longer. So could well, you go well, longer? Well, could you do that? Me, okay, let me see here. Let me turn this on. Turn our our uh, panel on, our thing for the panel, and we should be ready to it's go a now. Free night to fill, it's a fill-free night free tonight. It's a fill-free night tonight. So fill free to call. So fill free to call. Fill free to call. Yeah. Hear that, folks? I still got the air conditioning going, and outside it's only in, in the low 70s. No, but the humidity is in the high 70s. But the humidity is, is unbearable. Yeah, Here, it's very... Here, move over a little bit. It's like being bit, in so, Hong Kong. So you got you... In the there we thing. go. There we go. There we go. Uh, yeah. Okay. No well, one wants to talk to old people. Nobody wants. Nobody wants to see old people kiss. <laughs> um, <laughs> Is that gross? Um, I saw one time on the subway this older couple, probably yeah. our age, but I was younger then, and they were kissing passionately on the subway. <laughs> I wasn't turned off by it, but I kept staring at yeah. it. Yeah. Well, anyway. People are supposed to call at this point. So where are they? Yeah, well, you know, one day they're not going to call. 
That's when you hang up. And uh, that's when you and, hang and up. And that's when I I say, okay, good night, everybody. I'm out of here. I'm out of here. You know. Uh, but but she stayed up just for this. I did, and I'm very tired. So so it would be nice if you called to talk to her. So okay. I could go to sleep. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, I've got my uh, my uh, my other new Mac. Yeah. Working pretty well good now. You got a lot of stuff. This well, week. I mean, I replaced everything in it, you know, except the fan. Which was the um, display you got from my office? This one? No. Oh, which one? No. In the other office. No. Oh, one of, uh, wait a minute. It's a big one. No, no, no. I didn't get any displays from your Yes, you did. You no. paid $100 for it. Oh, first... oh, that one? That yeah. one busted. Oh, did it? That really? one broke. Yeah. <laughs> All of a sudden, one day, poof. Oh. Uh, you know, so. Uh, I asked him if they were selling. That's why I got this one. I asked him if they were selling. What they're going to do is probably, he's going to let Bob know. Um, but probably what they're going to do is get somebody to come in yeah. and buy the whole thing. Uh, or all the equipment. Yeah. Oh, I see. Hey, look who's there Yay. in his cigar. In the, in the garage. In, in the garage because his wife doesn't want him smoking cigars in the house, right? You can't blame well, him. Well, I, 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 I don't want to smoke in the house Is that either, your man so. cave? It's just the garage. <laughs> I don't have a, the man cave in the house I wouldn't smoke in. So, <laughs> so I sit in the garage. It's nice. Yeah. And it's humid. Oh, tell me about oh, it. Where we, we, had, we had rain. It uh, stopped. It's coming up our way, I well, think. Well, the trouble that we've had is we've had trouble with the humidity, too, here. It's been hot. In that it's, it's hot. It's been hot here. But now it's, it's not been. hot anymore. But the humidity made it so that we have to keep the air conditioners on. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It yeah. was so nice to open the window today. But then Talk it just into got, the mic. It was so nice to open the windows. Yeah. So. Sounds like uh, Hong Kong sounds like Singapore. Everything is underground. Everything is when you go through the city of Singapore, you could walk from one end of the city to the other and never really touch outside. You go from building, you go escalators and then yeah. down and around I mean, and under. A, what's amazing are these shopping malls that are right? four or five stories in the ground. Right. <laughs> with restaurants and movies and a number one Fifth Avenue shops, you know, nothing cheap. Yeah. Hong yeah. Kong is not a cheap uh, country at all. Very yeah, it reminded me of Hong Singapore. Hong Kong's not a country. Well, it's China's true. the well, country. Used, Hong used Kong be, right? is the city. They're having some issues now. What? What kind of issues? Well, China wants to get involved in the politics. They're starting to. Yeah. Hmm. So, so what, 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 if they get involved in the politics, what's going to happen? I don't know. Oh, look who's calling. That's because it's a fill-free night. Because of fill-free night. We get all the quality callers. Hey, and, there he is. And all, as well as Jeff and his gelato tour. What is that from your Italian trip? Oh, look at yeah. that. Oh, like that's that? nice. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. And what does yours say? Every place that we wore that, yeah. people would come over to us and say, how did you get on the tour? Can we get on the tour? <laughs> Is it was it was it really was it, a a, was it really a gelato tour though? No, it was I mean, from the ice cream shop well, we sold it. It was, and the fact that it was hot and <laughs> and there's plenty of gelatos and and I'll show you the number of places that we stopped. Let's see if I can do this. Oh, okay. Oh, there we go. Oh, oh. wow. Okay, Venice, Florence. Yeah. Uh, where where else? Uh, we were in Siena, Siena, Siena Alex. We were in, we, we were in Siena. Well, she was actually in a hospital. In, in six a, in places. Sick bed. Wow. In Siena. She never saw Siena. Yeah, you promised to take me back. Yeah. Yes, hello there, Tom Yamaguchi. Your uh, panel's not showing on your YouTube. Oh, you know why? You, you didn't turn it on. I didn't turn it on. There we go. <laughs> That's I, you, know, you know what it is? I have so many things to look at here that I sometimes forget. That you know, I didn't turn it's something aging. on. Well, I switch the show. I do the whole thing. I run the audio. I, you know, you, well, uh, Rob can appreciate this, right, Rob? I you couldn't know. do it. <laughs> huh? I, I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I'm lucky that I get this thing on at all, you know. But uh, and you want to go back to radio? See what you have here. Well, radio is just one dimensional, right? All he's got is the board. Exactly. You know something? The night I did for uh, for uh, Walter. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, I I had withdrawal symptoms afterwards. 
I would think you would. Yeah, I really yeah. enjoyed it. Yeah, you know, I can't. Uh, I can't imagine doing it once and then not having you know getting to do it again. It would be it's a tease. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's kind of like yeah. as I say, yeah, it's like somebody tickling your balls. Yeah, and doing a little more than that, you know. <laughs> uh, but uh, you know, hopefully, I'll get to do it again or something. Did you hear Obama's speech? I read pieces of it. Try to get on it, YouTube, it, it, I'm sure. It, it, to watch him deliver it, I think, is very important yeah. because it is so well done, and he is so what a cla- eloquent, what a eloquent, oh, yeah. classy, yeah, mm-hmm. you know, well spoken, uh, and and not trying to alienate people, but trying to in, you know bring them into bring the fold. In. I mean, God, we need him, and well, we've got him back. I think. Did you hear it, Tom? I just only heard parts of the day. I'm definitely going to to, to watch the uh, the whole thing. So yeah. when did he give it? He gave when it he at give about, about, about noon. Oh, about noon our time here. Uh, about ten, uh, ten, ten day, after so. ten after after yeah. afternoon. Alex recorded it for me. Thank yeah. you very yeah. much. Well, I, I recorded it for me because I had to do Snyder, and I knew he was going to be giving a speech, so I started ah. recording it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it wasn't Is for it, you. Hmm. Huh? What? Isn't this isn't this uh, Kavanaugh thing really scary? It is scary. It's like they're pushing this through. Yeah. And he's gonna he's gonna be there to protect lifetime. Trump from from and jail. Oh, I forget all the decisions, but right and jail. You know what I don't understand is why they're going through this whole process at all anyway. Just right. you know, just go vote. Why are you? What are you? What are you doing by this uh, this practice? You know, you think. All of a sudden, you're going to find something out, and everybody, every every Republican's going to go, "Oh well, I don't want him." No, mm-hmm. everybody's yeah. in lockstep, and yeah. so he could go out there, he could stand there in front of the committee and jerk off if he wanted to, and they'd still he's in, you know, <laughs> just about, yeah, yeah. So I mean, what, what? And it is scary, you know. What's the whole thing with this futile exercise that they've been doing for the last couple of days? Show, yeah. Mm-hmm. But you got to hand it to Cory Booker. Oh, he was great. You oh, know, yeah. he took his so bring he, it on, he, bring he, it he, on. His career on the line because he could be dismissed as a senator for this. Yep. Uh, and and uh, I don't think he's going to, but still, he took the risk. And I, I, you know, I appreciate yeah. it. If he wants to run for president. He's got my vote. Hey, I'm yep. going to sleep. Okay. Night, guys. Good night. Good night. Good seeing you. Have a good oh, trip. Have yeah. a good trip to to China. Thank you. Yeah, have a good trip to China. Thank oh, you. Oh, I'll see you before you leave. I'll see you. <laughs> yeah. I'll well, see you before you leave. You can put the chair over there. You can return the chair to where you found it, damn it. <laughs> I'd, uh, yeah. So anyway, so she's going. Any, anybody want to come over and have a party while she's gone? <laughs> you know. We can, uh, I'm going to be busy this weekend. Uh, well, you know how pussy whipped I am. Let me explain something to you. She likes to come home at the end of a hard work day and find the bed made. So every day I make the bed. Good. Okay? Good for me, right? Probably usually I get it done by, oh, I don't know, 11 o'clock in the morning. When she comes home, the bed is made. Now, if I didn't make the bed... I'd have hell to pay, right? Why didn't you make the bed today? I work all day now, nah, nah, nah. yeah, right? So, I'm I make the bed. Now she's going away for four days, and I don't have to make the bed. Guess what I'm going to wind up doing every day? Making the bed, mm-hmm. just so I don't feel guilty about it. <laughs> so well, yeah. you stay in the habit too, because huh? once you forget. Once you get it out of the habit, then you'll forget when she gets back. Right, right. So anyway, that's what I'm doing. Hello, Kevin. Good evening. Yeah, did you hear the speech today by Obama? Yeah, I did. What'd you think? Good, huh? It was refreshing. Yeah, it was like it was taking. Really re- yeah, it was like taking a shower, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Getting all that dirt and filth off of you that you've had to... It was to... just like watching his last one when the... Uh, which one was the last one he did? Oh, it was the speech at the uh, funeral, at McCain's funeral. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. It, I kind of I kind of looked at, you know, when they were shooting around the uh, 
you know, around the church there, it was kind of like everybody was sitting around going, wow, he's back. Mm -hmm. Even yeah. even some of the Republicans were sitting there going, boy, this is kind of nice. Do you, th yeah, do you <laughs> think that he is kind of wants to do speeches again, that he really enjoys doing them? Well, he's a good speaker. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think really you're going to see a lot of them between now and uh, 2020. Yeah, I, I think day, well, I, he really speaks. Good. Yeah, I think we'll see a lot of him up to the midterms. Then I don't think we'll see anything from him for a while, and then he'll be back in 2020 to support his party. You know. Yeah. But what I felt about that speech is that it was really all inclusive. That's why I'm sorry that. Well, I, part of me is sorry that Phil isn't here tonight, and that part of me isn't. You know. Uh, but I can't see where, if he, had, if he sees that speech, he can find anything wrong with it. I'm, I'm just trying to think, what could you find wrong with that? You know, it, none of it was saying, oh, we've got to do this, and we need more socialistic this and more of that. It was, it was a, we've got to start being inclusive and starting to work with each other, you know. And right there, that's what they could see wrong with it. That's because, you know, the underlying tone is they don't want inclusion. They want white America. Well, that's that's true. That's well, true. you saw what what Trump said about her, right? Hmm? He basically said he fell said, asleep. Yeah, yeah, he fell asleep. He fell asleep. That, that, that's just like what a kick in the nuts. Yeah, well, he fell asleep. Why? He, I, he wasn't. He didn't even. I don't think he even got to hear the speech. He was busy. No, he giving, probably didn't. He, he, he just said. He just said that. He just said. You know, he he said was it busy. One of his he, no, he, he was giving course. a speech of his own at a rally. And he was talking with Fox News while Obama was on. He was doing everything he could to upstage Obama, but somehow, unless you were probably watching Fox, nobody was upstaging Obama. You know, but he was trying his damnedest, going well, live. Fact, I was, I was watching the uh, speech on Fox to see what they were going to do. Oh, oh did they, they carry did, it? Did they carry it? Oh yeah, they carried every bit of it. Oh wow, well, that's good to hear. I was pretty proud of them. And what? Are the, and did they have any commentary afterwards? Uh, you know. Uh, you know what? I was because you know, I was bouncing back and forth. And I think I might have ended up on MSNBC because I like to see, you know, the different aspects of how they how they handle it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I I didn't go over there because I was so enthralled by the speech that I just I didn't think to go over and take a look to see if Fox was carrying it. How because, long did he speak for? And the trouble, the only wow. uh, the only problem I have with the speech is that it was an hour long. That about yeah. forty five minutes, I started kind of going okay now it's time to wrap it up but he i think he was just liking it too much you know uh, th these are the moments i think he lives for and he was born to he was born for this you know yeah. he's he's wait a minute what 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 american patriots saying some stuff on the chat there about him being decisive really dude all inclusive. His goal is to divide the country: rich versus poor, lib versus Republican, union versus non-union. What do you think Trump is doing, dude? Who is this? Holy a, Ameri shit. It's that American patriot. Bitter Barack Obama trashes 63 million Americans as paranoid, divisive, and resentful. That's not what I heard. No. That's not what I heard. But that's probably what American patriot, who we all know is a Russian, uh, yeah. invading this chat. Uh, our chat <laughs> uh, uh, you know I mean what what you try you really think that was the way the speech was presented are you out of your mind how can you turn that 180 that's it's exactly the world we live in today it's it's the world we live in what he was saying was we've got to get away from this you know we've got to get away from this politics of hey you're a republican then i'm not going to listen to what you have to say or you're a democrat i'm not going to listen to what you have to say or you're black you don't count you know we've got to exactly stop all what he that he wasn't saying well you know somebody once had a saying i can't remember what the saying was but it was something like this uh if, if we don't all work together we're all going to burn together you, you know, know I, I was on Jack's show one night back when Obama was still president, near the end, while this whole campaign was going on. And we got into this discussion about the whole thing of Black Lives Matter. Mm -hmm. and, and I think it's names like that. And I said this then and I stick by it. And But I had no idea how it would be a hangover after Obama was gone. So I think 
Names like that is a bad PR name because we all know all lives matter, right? And yeah. I kept saying, look, I, I'm not. I, I understand what they're trying to do, yeah. but 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 the the optic of the name Black Lives Matter for all of those people who feel like that is a is a rallying cry. And now it's like you don't hear about that stuff anymore because it, we're going in the other direction. That's why I was against the name Black Lives Matter, not because I was against their cause, but I just think that we're as a rallying cry. And I think this is everything that we're going through now to me is like a hangover from what was going on during. I remember you, know, you talking about that. Well, Rob, I, I, I kind of yeah. I kind of felt the same way about Black Lives Matter. Uh, yes, Black Lives Matter. So do white lives, so do, so do Mexican lives, so do Mexican like families. Them. I mean, all lives matter, and all lives should be respected. Uh, and, uh, I mean, I understand what they were saying, because black, right. blacks in America were getting shot down like they were in, it was hunting season by cops, you know. Uh, and so I understand the sentiment, but I think what it was, it wasn't a sentiment of inclusion. And right. you know, and you, what we, what, you, what your effect of what you want we're doing was, you wanted people to take notice. Yes, Tom. I would say you know, I, I feel the exact opposite. You know, I think the, the the problem was to say, oh, don't all lies matter. That waters down the message, and that would, that's actually a rather liberal attitude. Unfortunately, I think the, the the important thing is you have to be in a way, pretty blunt and direct that Black Lives Matter because. It appears that in this society, black lives have not mattered very much because these, these they because black men are, are getting shot down by the police unarmed. I'm just seeing something else coming up. Another guy, uh, you know. Yeah, but just, uh, Tom, I, I mean, it's just happening. It just keeps happening. We have to confront it. We don't, have don't to you be blunt about it and yeah. use that blunt language. Uh, Rob, and, I, okay, and yeah. let me just finish with yeah. just one moment. And, and and if we back away from it, I mean, it's sort of like, you know, with, with Colin Kaepernick, you know? I mean, you know, you're certainly going to lose people, but you they're the people you've lost anyway. I mean, the, the, the important thing is that that people understand how serious this is. And if we if we if we just sort of back off uh, the message is going to get lost. Well, uh, then again, I I really have to say, and then we'll go to Rob because he had his hand up, that uh, I'm going to respectfully kind of disagree with you, that I think that a lot of this hashtagging uh, uh, or sloganizing trivializes the thing and also uh, puts it in a position where it becomes divisive rather than inclusive. Uh, it can be abused. Yeah. I mean, I think I'm so sick of me, too. I want to puke, you know. Right. Now, Same the, the original thing. sentiment behind it, fine. The fact was, though, they started applying it to everything. You know, they didn't wait for their right shot to use it. And and um, so I just, you know, I just, I think we have a tendency to uh, trivialize these things by sloganizing them. Does that I mean, make I sense at all? I worked in public relations, mm -hmm. and to me, a name like Black Lives Matter, it, it, that needs to be your message. I don't think it needs to be the name of the group. And I think it needs to be more about what Obama was talking about in the speech today about inclusion and about bringing people together. To me, it's just as bad as the other side when you, you know, it's like I'm putting my stake here, you're putting your stake 180 degrees opposite with a statement like that. And to me, that's gonna turn off more people than it's going to, you know, than it's gonna help. You can get the message across without having to name something so stark, so 180 degree opposite. It, so it doesn't s sell well, especially we have s such a history of racism in this country. You're gonna lose a big percentage of people because Maybe maybe name it something else and use that as a mission statement right yeah uh, well i just you know, you know I, I, I i see both sides but well, you might too but i've been in public okay. relations and, yeah I, and, get, I get what you're saying you know and, i understand what, are, it's important yeah, i understand what you're saying when you say black lives matter and i sympathize with what you're trying to say however you're leaving me out you know you're not including me 
in this. Uh, you want everybody, you don't want a whole bunch of black people to go around going, black lives matter. How about you, white guy? Well, uh, you know. How you about know. you, Latino? How about you, Latino? Uh, yeah, exactly. You know, I mean. I, I mean, think about it from the, from the gay perspective. You've got LGBTQ. They're adding letters all the time yeah, to this. Yeah, they keep adding and they keep adding, yeah. It's yeah. the same kind of thing. It's not just gay and lesbian anymore. It's inclusive of everybody in an alternative lifestyle. And you know what the queer, the Q is for? is queer, mm -hmm. which is, I don't know, I think at one point in time it was a derogatory term. Well, yeah, actually, it's 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 the nice thing about the word queer is or the name queer is neither. It's not really necessarily derogatory or or affirmative. It's it's it just means different. And that's why a lot of people are reclaiming the word queer, because it just means different. In <laughs> fact, you can eliminate all those all those letters <laughs> if people would say, well, yeah. Oh, they just say, oh, screw it all. I'm, I'm just queer. <laughs> yeah, yeah First, I mean. I told you, I, I told you that the, the, one of my favorite Paul Krasner jokes is uh, he was uh, doing a, a show with Tom Amiato and the club owner uh, asked them, uh, asked Krasner if they were both gay. And he says, no, uh, Tom Amiato is gay and I'm queer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, from somebody like me, from the, you know, not necessarily from that type of group i feel i feel like i'm uh maybe not being polite saying queer yeah i, saying I agree someone is queer, you know what i mean saying. i would feel uncomfortable using that in a group and i have no well i i, I nobody, about anybody nobody being gay at all but it, i would feel uncomfortable using that term. I, I understand what gay is i understand what lesbian is i understand what transsexual is um am i leaving one out here uh, huh? Oh, oh bisexual. I understand that one. Okay, <laughs> but queer is just too. That's it, old fashioned. It, in it's the first old. Place. It's old fashioned. Is what it is. Yeah, I mean, and, yeah, and, and, air, and what you know, is and, and, and what the term? Bag. What, well, Why what the term? Too, what whatever. the term? You know, that's the whole thing. Encompasses what the term encompasses is all the other four. So why don't yeah. you just call it Q and leave it at that? You know. <laughs> And I'm not P I'm not a PC oh, person. I don't believe in all this PC stuff. I really don't. I don't. I I I, I find ethnic humor funny. I always did. I don't care. Yeah. I'm Italian. My family's all in the mafia. I don't care what you yep. say. I mean, I, I, it doesn't bother me. I'm a um, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't, you know, but I just think Black Lives Matter well, is just, and it isn't just about the name or the the word black or whatever. It's about lives matter because. Yeah. yeah, it's not true. Well, Black you know, I, 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 I think the funniest uh, well, thing is being called a cracker. Well, let's let let's <laughs> uh, uh, yes, uh, Tom. Yeah, I was just saying that you know, uh, getting back to your earlier point, I certainly don't feel left out by not being included in in, in Black Lives Matter. I feel, uh, yeah, if 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 that civil rights, uh, you know, if if one segment of the population is not getting its full civil rights, we all suffer from it. Right. And so I, I'm I'm very much. Uh, in favor of 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 saying, hey, that's my struggle as much as it is anybody's. And as far as as queer goes, I mean, just you know, if, if somebody wants to identify queer, then it, it's okay. But you if know, somebody called them, you queer, let, let them let that person tell you how they how how they feel, just like pronouns. You know, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you could ask, what pronouns do you want to 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 use? So more and more people who are 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 uh, not identifying as either male or female are using the plural plural pronouns uh, they them their. Here's so, another one. How about Oriental? Why did that that was the name that people when I was a kid you would say oh that he's the Oriental guy over there. You can't say that anymore, right? Yeah. What, if that's person from the Orient. And by the way, the term is not derogatory in any way, yeah, shape, or form. Yeah, I don't think form. it is, but yet that's like, you well, know, when you we, hear someone say it, I you think, go, Ooh, I God, think one me. of the reasons it's changed is uh, that area of the world now used to be called the Orient. Right. It's not any longer. It's called Asia. Mm -hmm. So to call somebody Asian is probably more proper given today's vernacular. Right? It, it also encompasses, like, 
the Middle East. And by too, the right? way, by where the, the Oriental rugs come from? They come from the Middle East, don't they? Yeah. yeah. Weren't they yeah. originally? Yeah. 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 That's true. So probably meant exotic is what it meant. <laughs> we're too hung up on we're too hung up on names and stuff. Yep. But, but yep. in my mind, when you say Black Lives Matter right away, you're just you alienate too many people, and it's it's a fire. Well, it's the guy fire. the guy who was the uh, you know the guy who was renting us this place when he shouldn't have been. Uh, he came up for a drink. Usually once a year, we have him come up for a drink, and we just talk a little bit. And um, I um, was, we were talking about race and so on, and I wanted to mention uh, uh, that uh, I was talking about people of color, okay? That I didn't want to make the distinction between black, Hispanic, whatever, but just people <laughs> who are a different shade than anybody else than the white people and the problems that they face, blah, 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 blah. And so I, I don't know if I use the term colored, but I said people of color. He said, well, we're not colored. He got very offensive. And I said, that wasn't what I said. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I wasn't referring to colored people. Although, if I yeah, were to talk. an organization. If, if I was, it, well, it, 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 the National Association of, of uh, the Advancement, the advancement, of, advancement colored. of Colored People. <laughs> Which to this day they call the the same thing. They they never changed it, you know. Uh, so, but uh, but it was not. I didn't feel that I was doing anything wrong because what I was trying to do was I was trying to exclude mm -hmm. someone from thinking that what I was talking about was just black people. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. but that I was talking about all people of color. Right. And and what would those be? Those would be colored people, right? <laughs> you know. So you'd have to say other than white. Get it, out of that one. Well, what do I do? Do I go? Do I go? And so the black people, Hispanic people, the blah, blah, blah people. I yeah, mean, you got to go through whole the whole list? list or what? What's the shorthand? <laughs> All right. So you have an LGB. Maybe we need. Uh, be well. Listen, I don't know how you uh, would do my that. My way of thinking about it, from what I remember of the term queer when I was growing up, because I got called it a lot. Okay, what <laughs> I what I queer or something uh, is yeah. that it it really is all those things. It's it's gay, bisexual, lesbian, transsexual, right? So why <laughs> not just call them queer and leave it at that? That's the Q community. The Q community. You can get yeah. past the derogatory use that it ate. Like you said, when you were a kid, you weren't called queer because they were being nice to you. They were making fun of oh, you. Oh, they were they, were they yeah. were trying to say that I was less than uh, masculine right. in my so, behavior. Uh, right. And because my father was a musician and he took me to the symphony and the ballet. Ah. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. So what, I queer something? Yeah. yeah. That was always the thing they would say to you. Queer something? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's a queer. Are you queer? They didn't even know what a homosexual was, but they were calling me queer. <laughs> Hell, I didn't even know what a homosexual was. Well, I did, actually, because my parents had these two friends who used to come over all the time. You know the story, Tom. I've told it a dozen times. Oh. used to come over, and uh, it was the first time that I was ever made aware that there were people who were gay. And um, uh, I said, gee, they're always coming over together. Are they good friends? And my father says, it's a little more than that. Because <laughs> my father never pulled, but my father wanted to be, he wanted to educate me. And he said, a little <laughs> more than that. I said, well, he said, well, they're like your mother and father. And I said, they love each other? He says, yeah. And I said, oh, okay. And so every time they came over, I mean, I just assumed these were a couple like my mother and father. And probably argued all the time. Anyway, you know, uh, uh, but it, it, you know that that uh, it, that was how I felt about. That's when I first realized there were gay people, and then I don't know what they. I guess they just used the term homosexual mm -hmm. at the time. Um, but uh, nobody ever said, "Hey, what are you, homosexual or something?" No. Mm -hmm. Yes, Tom. By the so way, Tom, what, what are you, homosexual or something? <clears throat> What's that? Oh, I said, what are you, homosexual or something? <laughs> the first time I heard the uh, word homosexual was on the uh, talk shows, the talk radio in L.A. that my mother used to listen to. And it was like 
are, you know, it was like homosexuals and communists. And I, you know, it's like, <laughs> it was like, you know, these, you know, less, you know, these, these horrible, disgusting creatures. And, uh, uh, so that's the first I I heard, and then when I started figuring out they were talking to pe about people like me, I just it was uh, not a very positive thing to to re reinforcement, I could say. Yeah, yeah no, that's it's terrible. Uh, but so they've it, all started. They've all started with bad connotations, and then worked their way into into you know acceptable connotations. But, yeah, you know they've all started in the bad side. <clears throat> and then, you know, work to be an acceptable. Uh, our president, by the way, I mean, I hate to bring him up again, uh, but hell, why not? Uh, really seems why to not? be going off the rails now about Boy. about this New York Times thing. You noticed? <laughs> I mean, well, I, you know, I can, how do you blame him, really? Uh, it is a betrayal from people that he supposedly trusts his inner sanctum his cabinet and all that so i don't blame him for that i understand i mean i'm fa i wish this guy would come forward and and sign his name to it it would i think it would be a, a you know he'd be a patriot but i don't blame the president for being upset it's the one thing i don't blame him for being upset about quite frankly yeah, yeah. well you know uh by the way we've been joined by uh, by uh our good friend patrick hello patrick Hola. Yeah. Uh, anyway, no, what I want to say is, yes, there's a, there is somebody in his midst. And this is, I think, driving him a little batty. Because uh, today he, he asked Jeff Sessions to investigate and find out, to ferret out this traitor in their midst. He called him a traitor. Mm -hmm. that it, this was a, he almost likened this to a... Uh, uh, to a, a breach of, uh, of, of uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking at, of, of safety or whatever, that this, this was... Yeah, he called it treason. He called it treason. Now, what that guy wrote was not even close, remotely close to treason, mm -hmm. you know. But, man, he was, he, this was treasonous so far as he was concerned. And I just, I went, what? You know. And then he, he wants Sessions to, to go out and find out who it was and to find him. Find him. He is nuts trying to figure out what, who, who did that. He what wants he, a KGB what if, is what he wants. What huh? if he planted it? <laughs> <laughs> well, he's been known to phone up his other people. Oh. Yeah. You know. What if he went in the back room and said, hey, plant this thing, put this thing out. Let's drive them all crazy. Let's yeah. see what we can do with the media and drive them all crazy. I wouldn't put it past him. Hey, Patrick. Hello. Hello there. How are you? Very well. Did you see the Obama speech today? I watched Obama just like I watched Trump. I don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was going to be his answer. <laughs> yeah, why did he speak today? Yeah. Oh, on. <laughs> did you? Who fucking cared? What a... What would he have? There's no graduations or anything. Yes, it was. this was actually a thing at a school where they were giving him an award, and so he gave a speech. Oh, okay. Well, good for him. <laughs> Don't you feel happy? He has another little trophy on his mantelpiece. You know. Sure, it'll be one of many, just like uh, former President Clinton. Well, you know I wish I mean? you. I actually wish you had heard it. You had, didn't hear it, right? Uh, what? What could he have said that would be so magical? He he hasn't been president in two fucking years. He got nothing to offer any more than any other former president. Well, I I tend to disagree. If you heard the speech, I, uh, the reason I would like your opinion of it is it was a very interesting speech in the context of partisan politics, because I didn't find it terribly partisan. You know, I found that, again, we were talking about inclusion and including people, uh, a desire to make things inclusive. Uh, did you hear it, Ray? I sure did. Yeah? What would you yeah. think? It was just so wonderful to hear, uh, he's not president, I wish he was, but some intelligence speaking about 
how, the state of things right now. Well, it was nice to have an adult in the room is how I felt. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And, and, and he was objective. And um, I, I don't know how you could argue with anything he said. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes, Tom. Well, just to answer Patrick's question, and, and once again, Patrick, I don't know if you, if you had heard earlier, but I have not actually heard the whole speech yet. I, I intend to do that. But I, the parts I've heard, I, I really, really thoroughly agree with. Basically, it's a call to action, uh, telling, just laying out that our democracy is, is under under a great threat right now, and and we can't we, we can't normalize this situation, and how imperative it is for us to vote, and that message is coming needs to come uh, uh, you know clear, because if you know. Getting back to what we were just talking about a little earlier about this situation, this anonymous uh, op-ed in, in the New York Times, I don't know what the the motivation of this person was, what they were actually thinking, they were trying to accomplish, but it's sort of ironic that they would be ta say, well, we talked about the Twenty Fifth Amendment, but. We decided it was, you know, it, you know, it, it, it was, it was, you know, something that we, we didn't want to get, a, a, you know, mm -hmm. mess. And yet, at the same time, what they've done is created an even bigger mess and a bigger constitutional crisis. I don't know, I, I don't know how we can emphasize us the the, the the crisis that our democracy is in right now. And I'm happy that Obama's speaking out about it. He also pointed out that we've been through many crises like this before, and and things have worked out. It's happened to us many times in our history. Yeah, it was kind of like America's done. stronger than any idiot in the in the office, I think. Well, what he said was is that when you're president, you realize that you're there for only a short time, and you're. That's you, how he opened up. Yeah, and that that when it's over, you pass it on to the next people and uh, hope that they will get, put their spin on it, okay? But that, that you are, uh, uh, that, that the presidency was conceived as only a two-year term, a two-term uh, presidency, because no one should have a, a, a lock on that job. And um, basically he was saying that you never, you, when you leave it, you don't say, hey, you know, uh, it was mine. No, it was given to you. It was a trust given to you. You take it, you run with it, you do the best you can possibly do, and then when it's over with, you back off. I mean, he mentioned Patrick. He said, I, why, do, why do I want to hear from a guy who was, has been president in two years? He brought up that very thing, saying that normally presidents don't get into the political fray afterwards because... It was kind of set up by Washington. When you're through, you go home to Mount Vernon and you retire, right? Or you go into some yeah, other yeah. thing or you go to somewhere else. And you don't talk about the current administration. You don't say, well, if I was in office, here's how I would have done it. You let the new person do what they do. And it's always been kind of an unwritten rule that you didn't talk about it. But he said, basically, it's impossible not to under these circumstances. Uh, both hands went up at the same time, so I'll give it to Patrick first. Um, I wouldn't have known it was a, a speech about that at all anyway. I, it wouldn't have mattered. I mean, if, if it would have come on and said he was getting an award, I would have turned it off immediately anyway. And I don't give a shit. So whatever, whatever the content of the speech was, maybe worth a listen but the fact that it was that he was getting an award would have been even more reason that if i saw it pop up on the television mm. for me to turn it off what do i care well it was a well-crafted speech what? you know delivered expertly i mean if we want to just the speech... what what were you going to what say, Ray? Did the Ray? speech have anything to do with their own award? I didn't hear him talk about it. Oh, he, no, he was there to pick up an award. And well, so what? As, as a result of it, he I then didn't gave know a that, speech. Really. I, well, that, I didn't either. I mean, it's irrelevant. Yeah, well, that was the purpose. It was called, the Paul that's Douglas what, Award, I think it was called. That, that's what I was saying, Ray. Oh, uh, okay. It, it, it was, it, if I would have seen that it was 
he was somewhere getting an award, I wouldn't have listened to it. Just to, I, I have no interest in what he had to say any more Trump rallies. What my point when I came on earlier mm. is that because Alex asked if I saw it, and I said, no, just like I didn't want uh, the Montana deal with Trump. I don't give a shit. I mean, mm. whatever. No, I understand so, that. I understand that. All I'm saying is that sometimes things are just interesting by the virtue of how well they're done, crafted, written, what the person yeah, had to I, say, I you know, and, and I think that you would listen to it. I honestly believe this. If you sat down and listened to it, you'd probably go, not bad. You know, yeah, nothing, I don't think you would find much to get pissed off about. Now, we got this guy, American Patriot. American Patriot, stop fucking writing. You are you are literally monopolizing the board. It's it, look, American Patriot, American Call Patriot, in. Mike Allen, American Patriot, American Patriot, American Patriot, American Patriot. Hey, American Patriot, you're a fucking coward. Call this program. OK, yeah. in fact, call this program in the next five minutes or I'll block you. How's that? Okay, because uh, you, you're, you're literally messing up the chat board there. Yes, uh, yes, uh, uh, Ray. Yeah, w one of the things I really liked and probably liked more than anything that Obama said was that since 2010, the Republican Party has vowed to, to completely try to stonewall anything that the de Democrats want to do, even if it were things that they themselves believed in. Yeah. And and I think that was a, a really important thing for him to say, because no one these days ever says that. And yeah. it's the truth. And, and he had to go. He had to overcome that the entire time he was president. And it affected the Affordable Care Act. And that's why we have the mess that we have with the Affordable Care Act. Yeah. Because of that. Wait a minute. He, and that's uh, all I wanted to say. American Patriot just wrote, everyone is free to post. No. And I'm going to put a big. Asshole. I'm going to put a big no. It's my. Let me see here. I, 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 I'm channel. having trouble. I, let me put on my glasses before I type. It's, it's your channel. It's my chat room. <laughs> and channel. While he's doing that, Patrick, Patrick, uh, you, you've been saying you don't give a shit about this. You know, let me ask you a question uh, about your opinion regarding what I believe is going on with the with the Republican Party right now. I think what they're doing is very short sighted. The Republicans who are in power right now are willing to sacrifice uh, values, the, the re religious right. They're, they're willing to overlook so much of what this man is doing for the end game, for the end game of getting a republic, another conservative on the uh, on the Supreme Court, and for passing tax cuts, and for doing this, and for doing that, and they're being extremely short-sighted about what they're doing to the country because the end game is all that they really care about. Do you see that at all? Do you see? Is I mean, and isn't that important? I think I made it clear when Trump became the nominee that I no longer considered myself a Republican. Yeah. Well, all right, but they're in. Yeah. I mean, this is, in he, he's not coming out of a space of loving Trump. It's no, not I'm like, not, I'm, I know he doesn't. It's not, not like uh, it's not like Phil might not listen to it because he he likes Trump. Uh, it's just that Patrick, I think, is. I think he, as a Republican, he's dismayed by his own party. I mean, he's dismayed by what's going on. What was that that went on behind you there? My wife just walked out with our cat. I'm just like wondering <laughs> That's what, what it looked like. like. Look, I was going to say, hey, somebody's stealing your cat. Yeah. Yes, Tom. Well, just, you know, just being disgusted with the Republican Party, unfortunately, it's not enough, given that we do have a two-party system. We have to, cho we have to choose. And, and it's not enough to say I'm not a Republican. We have to be in a situation where we need to choose the Democratic Party. Because that's the only way we're going to get. But you know that's of, that's of, that, that Phil uh, uh, Phil that Tom excuse me I didn't mean to call you <laughs> Phil I'm sorry um, uh, uh, th that's wrong because there was a time in my life where you voted for the guy because of what he was saying not because of the party he was affiliated with 
And now you do vote for the party. You don't vote for the guy. And I think that's kind of wrong. I mean, I wish we weren't at that. That's exactly what Obama was talking about today. That, you know, we well, discount. I don't, so. what? I don't think so. And it gets back to what Rob was saying. Basically, and it gets back, to, I mean, confirmed in, in this uh, anonymous op-ed. What was the guy say, or he or she, whatever last person was say, that, well, we got our tax cut, we got our, our judges, we got our, our, you know, deregulation, and that's why we're just going to go ahead and just let him, you know, just go whatever he wants as far as what he has to say, and we'll just ignore him, and... And, and the same complicity in, 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 in Congress, for the Republicans in Congress. We're never going to get get any kind of any kind of accountability from from the, from from Donald Trump until we change the entire power structure in in Washington. And the only way to do that is to kick the Republicans out and put the Democrats in. We don't have any other realistic option. It's very different from the Republican well, Party it, it, that was it, it, in power uh, during Nixon. Obama said in that speech that uh, Trump wasn't the uh, wasn't the cause. Uh, he was the what was the word? Right. The, uh, he, he, he he was a symptom. Of he the was the problem. symptom. The symptom. Yeah, that the cause yeah. is is divisiveness we've created in the well, country. Well, it's 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 proving now that it's extending beyond Trump. It's, it extends to his enablers it, within his own own White House. Right. That recognize that he is mentally ill, that he should be removed from office, and they are not lifting a finger to do that. Well, you know what? What are you going to do short of assassination? You know, I mean, you, 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 vote you, him you, out. Uh, there's the Twenty Fifth Amendment. That's there's not never going to happen. Process. It we takes... have legal tools to remove a president. Never but happened. Unfortunately, to do that, we have to remove the enablers through the election. Twenty fifth Amendment requires a majority vote in Congress and two thirds of the Senate. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yes, Patrick. Patrick. And yeah. You, you have to have the cabinet members. Right. It. And the thing is, the Democrats aren't in power, and neither is the Green Party, and neither is the Libertarians or anything else. So this is where you're at, and this is where we're at. And I did want to say one thing about that op-ed. Um, I had heard it was today, it was on, I think it was NBC Radio or, or something, where the editor of the New York Times, uh, who vetted the uh, anonymous writer, mm -hmm. uh, that it was, they had to vet that that person even worked in the White House so that's how low level this person is, that it wasn't even somebody that the editor would have recognized by name like Pence or Kellyanne Conway. So I think this even speaks further to what I was saying the other night, that this is somebody that just, as you would put it, Alex, uh, tickling your balls. Um, so that well, well to, yeah, uh, but do you think that, do you think that maybe the New York Times guy was kind of throwing people off by putting it that way? Well, if if, if he is, it's the same thing as what I said. You think anonymous is saying the dog whistle word just to get the left to think that there's somebody in there too? I mean, well, you see, he's I, not exactly he's not exactly anonymous. I mean, they know who he is at the New York Times. So he's not exactly anonymous. They have just maintained his anonymity publicly uh, for his own safety or the safety of his job or whatever. I don't know why he wants to keep that job if he's so unhappy right. with it. You know, well, I mean, even Obama today in the speech, you would have liked this, Patrick, kind of put the guy down saying, you know, here you come along and you say all these things to tell us about what's wrong. And yet you're helping to aid the problem that you're saying that, oh, you know, there's 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 90 percent of the stuff we do is terrific. But the other 10 percent, the guy is crazy. But, you know, what you're doing is you're allowing him to do that 10 percent. You're a, you're a party to this this charade. 
Yeah, he uh, called him out. So he, he called, called him out. out. He called him out. He said, you know, uh, yes, Jeff. He needs to sign his name to it or not yeah. do it. Yeah. Yes, Jeff. Well, I, I look at this a little bit differently. I think that whoever wrote this uh, New York Times article, mm-hmm. I think that that he knew what all those issues were already. This is, this is nothing that's a surprise. This is something that's been gone working with Trump for the last couple of years. Right. Say. And I think that also that these people are working with, he is working with a bunch of other people who, who work for Trump together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. With Trump and without Trump. And I think a lot of those people, when you get this job, you have to tell everybody, oh, man, I got a job working for Trump. And everybody goes, wow, that is cool. That's terrific. And everybody wants to say, this is a great job I got. And I'm going to do the best thing. And I'm going to accomplish all these great things. Now, you look two years from now, and, and Trump, who everybody thought, well, he's probably going to work out fine. He's turned out to be the asshole that, I'll say, Alex and I, New Yorkers, know what a jerk he is. Because he's been that way his But, you know, you know I, I'm sure you're like I was, Jeff. There was part of me that was hoping he would be successful and that he would do right you know, that he would surprise us by his ability and his, his judgment. And, you know, nobody was hoping for him to be a failure or to go crazy or to go nuts. The last thing we need in, that, in, that, in the White House is somebody who's fucking crazy. Although you've got to be fucking crazy <laughs> to want that job, but that's another story altogether. <laughs> anyway, I think that yeah. happened. And, and now this guy is in that position where he's got a bunch of other people. He's trying to convince them, what are we going to, what are we going to do about it? And the one thing he did is it made it public information. Yeah. It, Maybe he was hoping that other people would open up if he Well, did. that's right, but that has it. But, you know, we have, we have, we have, uh, and then we'll get to you, Rob, because I saw you had your hand up. We've, we've had in the last couple of weeks three really rather damning situations. Number one was the Amorosa book, okay? No matter what you think of her, it was still revealing on a lot of levels. There was the Woodward book, okay? And now there's this op-ed piece. Uh, it's really a triple whammy. Well, the funeral also. And all of them, all of them, all of them, you could say any one of them were lying, but all of them seem to corroborate each other. Mm-hmm. And, and that's what I was going to say about the Woodward book. Woodward mm-hmm. is well respected as a journalist. This guy, and, and we have Trump's own words in the phone call that he had with Woodward when he mm-hmm. told him that he tried to get a hold of him. He said, you've always been fair. I would have talked to you. This, uh, we, we <laughs> well, whatever. But I mean, he, w- he would have talked to, he, he, he said that he's been fair. So yeah. we know this guy is a, is a respected journalist, and he talked to all these people off the record mm-hmm. in around Trump. And and one of the things that was brought out was that he just wanted to pull, he wanted to pull all the troops out of South Korea, not understanding the ramifications of that. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's just how do you have a guy, <laughs> the chief executive of the United States, who is in charge of our military, in charge of po- military policy who doesn't have a grasp of what he's doing. Forget about his character, just his understanding. He, he makes decisions without completely understanding what he's doing. Yes, Patrick. That's why I'm not as concerned as some people have been on the panel or may still be. Um, because he got some people within his cabinet that are sharp enough that know these things, like Mattis and, you know, Kelly, and that, that will tell him no. But, he, but they, what, if he could order them, and then what? Do you disobey the president? Mattis already has. Yeah. 
Okay, let's hope that continues. Well, it, it will, because it, the, thing, the thing that I've noticed with Trump is when he, like, the few rallies that I've seen where he's kind of gone off the rails and, you know, just done his thing, he's like a cat. <laughs> You know, you, you throw a shiny object. So if he's intent on pulling troops out of Korea today, if you're mad at you say, okay, we'll look into that, Mr. President, and then somebody else can throw a ball, and then he'll go after that. And, you know, and it's the same with the media, with his tweets. I mean, he gets the same game played within the White House, and he played the same game with the media. He'll say one thing, the media will chase it, then he'll switch gears, then the media chases that. I mean, when's the last time anybody heard about these caged children that are Good at point. the border? Good you know point. why you haven't? Because the media is not interested. They're interested in the gotcha shit that doesn't exist or that's going to take a while to get there if they would just focus on certain things they would accomplish more, and it's just like with him. I mean, he wants to pull troops out of South Korea. All somebody needs to do is throw a ball to the other end of the West Wing, and he goes chases that, and then <laughs> everything's fine. But that's scary, right? That's the guy who's the president. It is, but at the same time, if that's the situation we have, at least there are people that know enough to throw a fucking ball to get him off of that topic. <laughs> Okay, let me, uh, let me, oh, yeah, oh, but hands are still up. Uh, let's see here. Who was first? Who was <laughs> We're first? We're not finished. Uh, uh, Tom, then Jeff. Okay, so let me, let me address this adult in the room argument, which actually is one of the speculations about what the, uh, the intent of the letter was. It's, oh, don't worry. We're not going to let him blow up the world. We're, we're the adults in a room. And it just, that argument is just not cutting it. I mean, it's basically, to assure people to, to you know, uh, Republicans that have been bailing to, to, to keep them on board for the November elections. But, yeah, as I said earlier, I mean, they're, they're actually creating a worse crisis by doing exactly this, by, by, uh, by basically, it's a coup. It's it, 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 an unelected government is in control of the White House. These are people that have no have no accountability to us, and we're expected to say, "Oh, that's a good idea because Trump is nuts." No, I'm not taking that. <laughs> yeah, you see what he means by unelected? It's the cabinet that's trying to keep him on track. It's not, you know, the president the the day, who was elected. Blame, at the end of the day, if something goes wrong, they can blame him. Well, you know, if if if, uh, if, if some of these reports are true, one, uh, there are a couple of things we can assume. This president thinks he can kill anybody he wants to. That was one of the revelations that came out in the last week. Uh, he feels he can silence the press. Mm -hmm. You know, now, uh, you know, that's not something you do. I mean, you may not like what the press has to say about you. Hell, I've hated what the press has had to say about me over the years. I, I got to the point where I wouldn't buy the Sunday Chronicle because I didn't want to read Ben Fong Torres's column, you know, because he was always saying, he was always smashing me for something, you know. Uh, and I just, so I stopped reading the Chronicle on Sundays. Uh, the, you know, I, but nevertheless, they, he, he, they have a right to say anything they want to about you. You're president of the United States. And... Uh, you have no right to try and intimidate them, you know, because it, a, a free press, whether it's good or bad. Let me let's let's for a moment kind of jump over to a slightly different topic, but the same topic. Uh, uh, what's his name? Jones. Um, Alex. Jones. Alex Jones. How can I not remember the first name? <laughs> Alex Jones, uh, who I absolutely find despicable. All right. I have no, absolutely no respect for the man. I think the man is irresponsible. Uh, I, I think he's in it for the money. Okay. All those things. And yet, I think it's fucked that Facebook, Twitter, and now somebody else took, YouTube took him off, and uh, there was a new one that took him off today. 
This is overreaction to. You know. I think he has every right to be part of the discussion, even if he's full of shit. Am I wrong? I think so. Why? No, I, I agree with I, you, Alex. I think so because 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 this gets into what you used to talk about about enabling people. You know, this man has caused. You know, he's really caused a lot of harm, mental anguish to the people at, at uh, oh, I keep forgetting the school up in Connecticut. Um, uh, Stony, uh, the, you know, the, the, the school up in Yeah, It's yeah. like, say, it was, all, it was all invented, it was a false flag. This guy, nobody owes him a platform. This has nothing to do with... With with uh, with with his protected free speech, well, he can get out anywhere he wants. I mean, he can have his own network, which he does. Yeah. But nobody owes him their platform. I mean, you don't have to give him a platform any more than than you have to give American Patriot. No, but then uh, again, then again, I open this. This is my platform, and I open it to other people to give me their opinions. And if somebody was entirely disruptive on this program, I would get rid of them. I have to, I've done that, mm -hmm. uh, you know. But uh, what we're talking about is something like Facebook or Twitter that takes on all comers and says, "Come on, say whatever you want to say." And then when you say what you want to say, you know, I, I I say he's irresponsible, and I say that's every reason to keep him off these platforms. Right. But who am I to make that decision? If it's you my own the platform. It's you huh? have the right. Yeah, if, and they have terms of service. You, they, you, you create yeah, but, a specific uh, terms of service, and if people don't abide them, you can kick them off. Yeah, but you know the terms of service are kind of like, uh, uh, well, what, 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 what can I do that would get me kicked off Facebook? Well, do it, and we'll let you know. But the medium, media has always acted, you had licenses to worry about, you always acted responsibility because you had this platform. Today with the internet, there isn't any of that, and that causes a guy like Alex Jones to have a much bigger platform than he would in the old, before the internet and before all this social media. So you need to change the rules a little bit to allow for this platform that anybody can have. Well, I just, you know, I just think that, uh, I, and I, I know what you were saying, Tom, because I always said that I felt the main responsibility I had was to do no harm to my audience or not put them in harm's way, that I had, I could do anything I wanted to, but I didn't want to do that or give somebody sense, a sense of permission, which, by mm -hmm. the way, Trump does every day. Right. Okay. Uh, I, I find giving a sense of permission is wrong, too, and I never wanted to be accused of that. Uh, and, and so, uh, you know, I, I, what, what can I say? I just, I, I always felt, uh, uh, always felt that way. But I also, at the same time, put myself in the position that I say what I want to say here, and uh, Alex Jones should not have these people pull the rug out from under him. Uh they don't like what he has to say. They consider what he says irresponsible. The whole thing with the students in Connecticut and all of that. The only thing it did was bring harm to the people who heard Jones's message. There was, you know, I don't think any other repercussions of that. But Jones is a terrible, horrible, ugly, disgusting, vile person. I even felt sorry for Marco Rubio the other day when he cornered him in the halls of Congress mm -hmm. uh, when they were doing having the Facebook hearings. I, well, what a creep. But nevertheless, uh, you know, I, if I had an open forum, I'd give him the right right to, to talk, you know. I also have the right to disagree with him, you know. But that, that's just me because I, I'm in this business where I face censorship all the time. And I just, you know, what I love about the Internet is there is no censorship. It's a good and it's a double-edged sword, though. Yeah, it is a double-edged sword. But if you believe in the Internet as a place of, of freedom of speech, then you have to take the good with the bad. And the bad is obviously the ugliest is Alex Jones. So. Then I guess the answer would be to open up a Twitter-type site and have it be open and free. And that may happen. Yeah. Uh, Ray, you said you agreed with me. Call it open space. Yeah. Well... I just think that we shouldn't let go of our freedom of speech, the right to freedom of speech, so easily. 
Mm. But on the other hand, they do have terms of service and they are for-profit companies. And I can see where they would have the right also to um, enforce their terms of service in order to keep their profits where they need to be. I, I mean, it's, it's, a diffi- it's a difficult situation. So freedom of speech you, is dependent upon their You don't have freedom pro- of speech because you can't go into a movie theater and yell fire. I know. You don't have freedom of speech. You have to be responsible. Well, you have – and there are offsetting circumstances for freedom of speech. And, that, and that's – well, but clear. wait a minute. Let me let, it, let me say this. Alex Jones would probably say to you, uh, R- R- Rob, um, yes, you have uh, don't have a right to yell fire in a crowded theater unless there's a fire. Right. If there's uh, a fire. And so he feels he's yelling fire in a crowded theater because there's a fire. Where's the where's the proof on anything? And and Trump's you know we we were going to see we were going to see the proof in a couple of weeks about uh, Obama, you know, uh, uh, bugging his phones and all that oh, other yeah, stuff. Yeah. Noth- there's been no credible evidence to any of this, and so it becomes irresponsible to let somebody go on like okay, that let without me ask you, coming out and saying, here it is. Do you let remember ask, a few me, weeks ago when Al- I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. When Alex Jones himself even said, I don't really believe these things. It's for entertainment purposes. Someone was, someone was about to no, sue what him. No, his wife, his ex-wife was suing him. Yes, and he said, and, "Well, that's just the character I play on the air." And you, I think that's the truth. Uh, like he is. said, he's, he's just money. trying to make money. I don't. I, it's and then what? The other thing I get confused about is Rush Limbaugh used to incite this kind of emotion too. And all I ever heard from radio personalities and Alex, I don't even know. Maybe you were one of the ones. I have. Tr- they used to say, "I don't agree with." with Rush Limbaugh, but I have tremendous respect for him as a broadcaster because yeah. much, well, many said, of us are here that. because of him. I said that. And he, used to, and he was an asshole. Well, then no, be, no. A, remember then what be a satirist. He was? But he was be a, a satirist and don't, and, and, and have it be, you know, and, and don't, okay. you know, yeah. don't come across as being somebody well, who's let me, telling let me, the truth. Let me put this in context, okay? Uh, uh, do you ever hear Step and Fetch It? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was a comedian who came up with a character that was very pervasive, black character. Shuffled, go, I, you know, I'm moving as fast as I can, boss, you know, that kind yeah. of thing. And as years went on, he was accused of s- creating a stereotype of the black man in America. But that was just a comedy act he did, and he did it very well, and he was very talented at what he did. And uh, the people who actually enforced the stereotype were people like Willie Best and Mantan Moreland who came along and tried to capitalize on that act. If oh, the only person doing it had been Step and Fetch It, then I guess he wouldn't have created a stereotype. All right? The same thing is true with Rush Limbaugh. Rush Limbaugh, if he existed on his own and hadn't spawned all these other people and a whole business of right-wing talk show hosts, would have been looked at as a very good broadcaster who you happen to disagree with. So that's why I, and I think he was the first one there, and everybody else was just trying to top him. You know, and 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 it wound, mm. it wound up becoming uh, it, it it wound up becoming all this this you know this this character that he plays, sort of like what Colbert was, mm-hmm. right? At one point, it winds up becoming the truth to people. Well, it's kind of like, am I saying, but, 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 did I just come out and say that, that Rush Limbaugh was the step and fetch it of right-wing talk show hosts? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you did. It's about what I said, yeah. I mean, I always felt that he was very talented. I've, I listen to Rush. I go, I disagree with him. But, boy, I'm really enjoying this. He really is a great communicator. You know, he really, and, mm-hmm. and the reason you, a lot of people perceived him as dangerous is because he was very good at what he did. You know, I mean, I can listen to people of, you know, as a broadcaster, I can yeah. listen to another broadcaster who I disagree with completely and say he's good at what he does. Like, for instance, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Glenn Beck, who has a channel. Every now and then I sit there and watch him because it's kind of mesmerizing. He's very good at what he does. Uh, and, but see, you're and, getting- and, and, and yet I don't have to agree with him. I don't even have to say he, he sh- you should listen to him. But as one broadcaster listening to another broadcaster, now I listen to Alex Jones and I say, this is the worst broadcaster I ever heard in my life. You know, the only thing he put him across was his raspy voice and his 
asshole ideas. Yes, Patrick. Um, I started, I listened to Glenn Beck, um, I would say in the mid 2000, mm -hmm. you know, maybe 2005, six, seven, something like that. And it got to the point where I couldn't deal with him because he would just, he was almost like an Alex Jones sort of personality. Yeah. And then around 2015, um, I had read something about him talking about Trump. So I got interested because there weren't many people talking about Trump negatively because everywhere on television, you know, you had Trump everywhere and it was funny here or there or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So I started listening to Beck and I still occasionally listen to Beck because during 16 and 17, he was very critical of Trump and what his ideas were and how he acted and I thought him to be a very um, uh, fair um, observer. Yeah, of I, Trump. I think that the I think that the the Glenn Beck you didn't like was the old Glenn Beck. This Glenn Beck, I believe there was a place around maybe 13, 14, where Glenn Beck said, "I really feel guilty for a lot of the things I've said and done." Uh, he actually admitted that, yeah. and yeah. then at that point he started to change and it's not that he isn't still right wing uh, but his whole presentation is far more reasonable than it used to be and so i can right, sit huh who said right wing it? is fine right wing left wing that's all fine if it's based in fact when satire becomes the news and we have people who are in satire who are preaching to people and they're taking it seriously, that's dangerous. Yeah, yeah. It's dangerous. My question, here, here's a question to bring up to this crowd, is, and I think it's, it's a fair question, has the American public lost their grasp on what is reality and what isn't reality? Because of the kind of television we're fed, the fact that the news channels all try and gin up everything. I mean, we, uh, uh, what, what's the reality anymore? The fact is, we just elected a reality show host. Okay, based, and those people voted for him, not based on what he is, but on what he was on television. That well-lit Executives sitting in the uh, the uh, conference room, you know, saying you're fired and you aren't fired. It, 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 you get what I'm saying? That we they yeah. bought the they bought the yeah. unreality about it all. Too many lines blurred. It'll, exactly. Being joined and, by uh, by uh, uh, our dear friend Brian Ludwig. Hello, Brian. Are you there, Brian? Can you hear us? We can't no, hear Mike. you. Uh, got to turn your mics on somewhere. Oh well. When you get it working, yell, yell and shout. Uh, but uh, uh, do we have a reality gap here, where yeah. we're, we're suddenly we're simply? I mean, t somebody said that I was watching like TMZ, and somebody said, you know, Kim Kardashian should run for no, president. Can you hear me? Oh. Yes, we can hear you. Right. She said okay. she might. He, oh. it, it, she said she might. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Yeah. And it's and a Cardi, Cardi and then Cardi B said I'd room up for vice president with her. Boy, uh, this is this part? world is really getting <laughs> crazy, you know. Yes, uh, yes, uh, Brian. I only dropped in the last few seconds, but I kind of have an under idea of what what you're getting at and what you're talking about, uh, or at least I have something that uh, dovetails with what you're talking about. That being that. There is more than one group of people, or quite a few, a bunch of people, myself included, who thinks that this is an era that marks the end of the career. I used to be a public service or service agent, or I used to be a mayor, I used to be governor, era of uh, presidential candidate. This, it's, it is now uh, who's the bigger celebrity, who's got the biggest, most flashiest cock or set of tits. Well, you know, I mean, years, years ago, when a movie star went into politics, a... Uh, 
they said, at least we finally have a, con a senator who can sing and dance. That was George Murphy. And that's mm -hmm. the first time I ever remember Bernie any, Reagan? Uh, 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 no, Reagan. it was before that. Oh, before before that. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, uh, George Murphy, you know, tap danced with Shirley Temple, but he became a senator from the state of, of California. And uh, that was the first time that anybody even considered people who were in show business to get into politics. And then you had Ronald Reagan. And uh, now it's starting to happen more and more often. And, and Trump is the end game of this whole damn deal. Yeah, we don't, don't know that he's game. We, yeah, don't we don't know. We thought end George game. W. Bush well, was the end game of uh, idiotic, uh, out of, aloof uh, presidents. And look, yeah. well, look. Two administrations later look, after. Look so don't say we've reached rock bottom. There's always a trap door. Yep. George Bush was a very intelligent man, very high IQ. I didn't agree with his politics, but he was still he was still a, 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 somebody who at least was a politician who, you know, was government person, not not all these popularity contest sideshow people like a Trump. Well, but is is that what you've got to be in order to win these days? Is that is, is, is do people suddenly look and blur the line between reality TV and the election? Yeah, you know, I mean, yeah. after all, don't we have the debates? Isn't that some kind of you know American Idol of sorts? You know, yeah. America's Plus, got talent. You could write uh, five regarding what Rob, Mr. Ofano, by the way, and nice to see you again, uh, said. Um, you know, you could write a 500-page. The man George W. Bush could have written a 500-page doctoral thesis on theological. You're talking studies. about. You're talking, oh, he gets behind a yeah. camera and can't put two words together, or when uh, his colleagues are afraid of what he'll say or not say, or bumble up what he's trying to say behind a camera. It looks to me like he's a fucking idiot. Well, my my question to you is: You're talking about the elder Bush, right? Oh, I'm talking jun Junior. Junior? Unless, he, he, Alfano, were you referring to H.W. or W.? No, I was uh, talking about W. He's a smart man. He just wasn't great. He, he, when he spoke, he wasn't a great speaker, but he's still an intelligent man. I'm not a big fan of people who, who you know, hear Jesus Christ say to them, this is what I need to do. That's scary. But past that, I mean, I, he's, he's, he's no idiot. You're talking he's, about Daddy Bush, right? No. no, no. Oh, you, oh, you're talking about W. 43. Uh, I didn't find him that intelligent, but yeah. I, high IQ. If you look, uh, I just saw a, a, a listing of the most intelligent presidents, and he's right up there. He's, he's where, where did, where, where did, where, where, like where was Trump, where was Trump on that list? Uh, they, they wouldn't say, Trump says he's, Trump, the only thing that the article says is Trump saying he's got the highest IQ of any president, which, of course, you'd expect him to say. Yeah. But they listed the presidents <laughs> in order of their IQ. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and W's got an IQ. Who, who, he's up there. Who, he's who 138 was on, you, to 140 somewhere. Do you remember who was on top? I don't remember. Um, I don't remember. Probably. High IQ doesn't really mean a lot because... Uh, Jimmy Carter, one of the highest IQ presidents, wasn't very successful. Right. Yeah, it has nothing to do with doing a good job. Yeah. Yes, uh, 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 Tom. Uh, was oh, wait a minute. Ray, Actually, I think Ray uh, who, was first. Ray? Yeah. Well, as far as IQ goes, the person with the highest IQ in the United States right now is a second grade teacher, just FYI. But, um, <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> Bush, <clears throat> excuse me, if you hear him talk now, when, when, when he's interviewed, he sounds yeah. pretty damn smart. I think he was under a lot of pressure when he was president, and he was exhausted, and he just he was also bumbled being, and bumbled around. He, and now he sounds, he, when he, when, he's very coherent, very thoughtful. Uh, I, I'm impressed when I hear him He was now. also handled and managed a lot, too. Yeah, I think we're also looking at it through the tr the, pr the Trump prism a little bit, mm. too. Yeah, and, and also I wanted to say, Alex, about hey, the reality TV thing. It is so true. I have family members. I won't say who they are, but the only thing they listen to is KSFO and Fox News, and there that is their reality. And when I bring up this other stuff, they don't even know what I'm talking about. Every their reality is what they hear on Fox News and KSFO, and that's scary. Yeah. That's real. And there are a lot of people like that. Tom. Yeah, just to to call uh, to what Ray was saying about. Um, uh, George W. Bush. My impression of, of, of Bush was 
he was very uncomfortable in formal situations yeah. while he was president. Uh, he was most when 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 he was in informal situations, especially on small groups or one on one. He was very very comfortable and uh, you know good conversation. And, and I always heard that one of his great skills, probably his best skill, was right raising money. That's how he was actually a successful as a president because he could get on the phone and raise tons of money. He's a you know one of these. Very, very affable, very nice, very charming, charming people in these informal situations. And nowadays, it's beyond just what you know, celebrity. It's who can raise the money. We're in, a, in, a, in, in an era where money decides who gets elected well, and who doesn't. You know, when when you hear somebody like Kim Kardashian, even profit that she might run for president someday. <laughs> you realize how low the bar has been lowered uh, in, or how high, high it's been raised? What, what, are we doing limbo? If we're doing limbo, how high it's been raised if we're doing, trying to jump over and how low it's been. Oh, yeah, the they, fact they, they, is yeah. that uh, when you hear her say that, you go, she's got the idea that she can become president because, hell, Trump did. You know, she could probably. Uh, she was just there the other day again. Why? A couple uh, of days ago. Oh, it was another was the, another one Trump's of her office. trying to get another pardon for another uh, drug. I mean, he just person. let. Of course, he just lets her in whenever she they wants to show up. They sat at a forum. She's sitting at a forum. Yeah. Unbelievable. A, a big table with the Betsy DeVos, I think, was there. Yeah, and, with all these powerful and, people. And, and, and Jared was there, and Ivanka it's, was there, and yeah. It's it's laughable. It's yes. like the Truman Show well, or something. Well, look, I, look, look! I give her, I give her credit. No, it's fine well, for her. I give her credit. I give her credit for her attention. for involving herself in something bigger than you know what clothes yeah. she's going to no, wear. No, I give today. her credit. You know. My problem is is that Trump gives her a forum just because she's Kim Kardashian, right? And because That's she likes her. Right. If and Ray Renati had called him up and said, "I want to talk to you about somebody. I want pardon," they go, "Fuck you." A exactly. famous person that likes him. A famous person with a, nice with a lot of Twitter people, a lot yeah, of big, big following. She takes that's, a nice picture. Yeah. yeah. You want to see if that ass is really as big as it looks on TV. Yeah, he probably wants to bury his face in between those cheeks. Well, oh, the only thing I hate about that ass is, did you, ever see, did you ever see the porn film of her? You can't see yeah. what's going on because that ass is too big. Yeah. You know. I can't even see Jay Z's face. It's just right. Ass, <laughs> ass, ass, ass. <laughs> titty, titty. Oh, that Lewis Black bit. I remember. Titty, 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 titty ass. ass. Titty, titty, titties. Every titties everywhere. <laughs> Two thousand one Britney Spears Super Bowl halftime show. I think. Was By the way, uh, I, 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 I'm making this that. offer to Rob as a friend because he's been so good to this network and lending his voice and his talent that anytime you want me to come down there, I'll help you paint the wall in back of you. This is my garage. It's going to. <laughs> <laughs> what are the What are the little dots? Is that where the nails went in, or something? Yeah, that's just yeah. they they spackle over the nail. So why didn't they just paint it? They don't. They don't paint garages. Why? They spackle it. They they finish it. If you want to paint it, you can. Oh, I that's see. The first thing I did with mine, I painted it. I don't yeah. know why. Really, yeah. you get everything else. They do the whole house, but they don't finish the garage. Yeah, Cost money. Why? Is that because people are so particular about how their garage looks? They the want to be able to choose their minutes. own paint? I, I don't, I've don't. i looked up and down all the houses here. Nobody's garage is painted. They all look like this. Really? Well, that's yeah. because nobody else yeah, wants to like do it. It's like 15 minutes. They spray paint the whole house. And yes. You think they spray paint the, the garage, but they don't. <laughs> yeah, they, they use spray guns. They spray the whole house is yeah. sprayed yeah. white. Gee, yeah. I take, wish, I wish another 15 minutes. once in my life I should have built a house. I never did that. But it sounds like you've had an enjoyable time doing that. Oh, it was fun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was. Nerve-wracking and fun at the same time. Is, is you have everything to make all these decisions in five minutes, picking everything? Is it all pretty well settled now? With because I know that they wait a year for the house to be. Yeah, in uh, next Tuesday or Wednesday, they're coming to fix the walls, all the nail pops, all the seams and all the stuff that's settled in the past year. But in the next five years, it's going to settle more like my last house did. It'll just settle, and I have to fix them again. And eventually, you'll wake up one morning, and the ceiling is on your bed. 
<laughs> not that bad, but especially around the staircases, all the all the seams start to, to give out, and you got to have that all fixed. What kind of workmanship is that? It's, it's just a house ship. settling. It's just you, 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 you can't prevent that. In other words, no, you, you, that's that kind of stuff. That, you know, gets hot, it gets cold, it's humid, it's dry, yeah. and the house moves and settles. And they, and, and they don't they don't build houses like they used to. I, no. I had a wall. I had a wall that was crooked, and they they said they'd come in and fix it. And the guy came in with a two by four and a sledgehammer, and he starts pounding at the bottom of the studs. I said, "Get the fuck out of here!" Well, your house, uh, uh, Rob, was kind of prefab, wasn't it? And uh, they brought in the walls, and then they brought they bring in the- yeah, they build all this stuff. They tell you they it's funny because if you look down the street here, they're building. Yeah. There's a whole new street going up, and all of the they they bring these big eighteen wheel trucks in. And they do, they drop off the house in pieces, the right? And then it gets yeah. yeah, and then it gets yeah. assembled on site. And they say that it's built in this controlled environment. But then that stuff will lay out in the rain and the weather yeah. until they. Yeah. <laughs> isn't that what they, we? Isn't that what we? One of the first houses up, and I watched the whole neighborhood get built around here. Yeah. Isn't yeah. that what yeah. we used to call prefab? It's next to that. It's, Semi, it's not yeah. as quite as it, it's it's as computerized. Everything is computerized the way they build everything and design that way, and then they just assemble it on site. They they send all the the frames are all put up and like the whole side of the house goes up. Then the trusses go up on the top, and they just build it in pieces. And it, they put the house up within like forty eight hours, and you've got the whole house up. Then wow. they then they start to close it in. Wow, and yet you're able to kind of design it the way you want it so it doesn't look no. like the house next you door. Does it look like the house design, next door yeah. to you? They don't design the, the you don't design the house like you don't design the floor plan. You pick a floor, a floor plan and mm-hmm. then you can design all the pieces in it like the flooring and the cabinets and the and the granite countertops and the you know what you want to finish and what you don't want to no, finish. But, but in other that. words, if I came to your neighborhood, would I would your house look different than the one next door to it? Yes, because they have different what they call elevations, right? The guy next door to me, most of these houses are Milans. This is called the Milan. And so the, the front of the house, it doesn't look the same because the front is different. They may move the, the peak to the left and then to the right and then to the center. So they all look a little bit different. Every fourth or fifth house would be different, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Well, this is well, a whole I, fu- I live in an Eichler. It's the same thing. Oh, I, Eichler homes were very famous. Oh, yeah. they're real nice. They're real. Fa- they're really. Uh, they're really popular now. Yeah, when I first moved in, everyone hated them, and now everyone yeah. wants one. And the values are ridiculously well, high. And the early game has a whole. Well, bunch why of, did they hate yeah, them? Yeah. I guess because in their time uh, they were like A-frames and things like that. You know. Yeah, well, they're built on a slab. There's no subfloor. There's no attic. Uh, they're flat it, top. Rewiring anything. Well, mine's not quite flat. Some of them are a little angled. Our next door yeah. neighbor's flat. Would well, you get well, a lot yeah, of roof angled. leaks? It's just bad construction. Yeah. yeah. But, but, it's, but it's nice because yeah. there's a lot of light. Uh, quickly, uh, Tom. Last plug for tomorrow, the big climate march in San Francisco. I hope all you Bay Area people be there tomorrow and make it the biggest climate march on the West Coast in history. Ah, uh, good. Okay. What time? 11 o'clock. Start gathering uh, up then. And, and listen, we got to go. I thank you so much. It was a great citizen panel tonight. Just terrific. Uh, Jeff, always good to see you here. Tom, always good to see you here. Patrick, what can I say? If It wouldn't be a citizen panel without you. Uh, uh, and Brian, thank you so much for calling. Rob, always nice to see you, you know. You're always a, a good anchor on this uh, citizen panel. And uh, Kevin... Love having you here. Ray, love having you here. You're like, like family. Anyway, everybody, give him a big wave goodbye, and we'll say goodnight for this week. Bye-bye. That's the Citizen Panel, ladies and gentlemen. That's what it's all about. That's how we play the game, and uh, we played it uh, pretty well tonight. I really enjoyed the, uh, the discussion. It was fluid, and it worked, and it was terrific, and all of those things. Anyway, I'm Alex Bennett. Next is uh, The Intersection with Jack Bishop, followed very closely at 1 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time by Connections. We'll be back here after Damian Chaplin on Tuesday at 9.30. We'll be here at 10. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye.